Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here, and today I'm bringing you a game that I had in the Tier 10 Japanese battleship, the Yamato. So, uh, my build for this, I'm using the my normal Yami build, survivability build with uh, the legendary module, and I am us using Yamamoto Isoruku as my commander. So, <clears throat> this is a game you can judge by the title where my team pulls a hard limbing train. And I mean a very, very hard one. I legitimately think maybe only two ships didn't go all to the same cap. Two or three, if that. So, anyway, uh, we have spawned over here by the C cap, which is usually where lemmings go. Now, the issue is, once a lemming gets to the C cap, they stay there. Now, as I've said before, lemmings can work, and they can work quite well, as long as the team continues to move. The biggest problem with lemmings is that they go to one cap where they can't shoot out of, so it's normally blocked by either a mountain or an island or something. Like on this, on this map, you can see the two huge mountains that block the sea cap off from the rest of the caps, except for one little channel in between them. Now there are certain caps on certain maps where you can go in there and you can sit in there and get fire on the enemy team and that can kind of work for, for the best part you need to keep moving. So wait, Baltimore and Iowa have been spotted and I open up on the Baltimore first, try to get a uh, little deletion off on him. Now with the Yaman with the the legendary module for the Yamato, it basically gets your dispersion down to below even American dispersion so it's almost like there's no dispersion on your guns and when it works however as you will see this game I guess I ticked off RNGs or something cuz I get some groups with the Yami that even with the um, the legendary module they are very very out there and some of it like that is just my aim um, this was actually the third game I had played in Yami. I don't play Yami a lot anymore, unfortunately. Uh, I probably should play her a bit more. But with all, with all the things I'm trying to, you know, review and go over and try out, it, it you know, it's not high up on my list to play. So that certainly could have something to do with it. Um, this is after the live stream on Friday night. Played Yami in there, I'm like, oh, well, you know, I kind of miss it. Let's, let's go play it some more. So that's why I decided to play her for... Yeah, good, good five or six games last night. So anyway, enemy team has already capped the A cap. They are capping the C cap. Our destroyers are trying to get in there. There's a Jutland that he had the majority of the cap points on him, but he has been reset and he is now smoking up to try and avoid getting deleted. And I'm trying to say, okay, can I get a shot on him? And I decide against it because all it would do is just open me up to being detected. And honestly, the shells probably wouldn't have made a connection. So at this point, I can see that the enemy team is kind of bunching up behind that northern island at sea. And you click on the minimap, three of our destroyers, they're the only three ships that haven't gone to the sea cap. We have an AFK battleship over on the, uh, by the eye line. So, the game's going fantastically well so far. And we are behind on the points. So we have managed to secure the B cap now. So we're four minutes in. No one's dead yet, which is pretty good. <laughs> And that's usually a sign that the game is going to you know, actually be a pretty good game. Because we, as we've seen a lot recently, there's a lot of these uh, just absolute steamrolling games. Where one side will absolutely crush... The, oh, speaking of, speaking of the devil, there goes our Benson. <laughs> this is a carrier game, and the Kaga just took out our friendly Benson. And then there's the Kremlin. I'm like, oh, crap. That thing. So the Kremlin, from this angle, could certainly wreck the crap out of Miami. So I slam on the brakes and I start shifting my rudder so I can get my bow to the Kremlin because even though he does have 18 inch guns, they, are, they aren't 460 millimeter guns. They are only, in quotation marks, 457, so they cannot pierce my bow armor. So as long as I get my bow toward him, I'm good. Me on the other hand, being in the, in the Yami, he does have a strip of his bow that I can't pin, but I can still pin the upper part of it. So if we get into a bow off situation, I will win. And we just lost our Akazuki to their Benson. Oh joy, we're down two DDs. We only have two destroyers left and they still have all four of theirs for now. The Jutland is detected nine kilometers away from me and our friendly Wusta is trying his best to erase him. And it looks like his shots are all falling a little bit short. 
So, I floor it now because I think, okay, we have most of our team over here. We need to push up, and we need to get in the cap and push around to the enemy team because now they are capping the B cap, and this scenario, probably 8 out of 10 times, the friendly team will push to the C cap, take it, and the enemy team will just sit in the A and B cap and win the match. They'll have the majority of the caps, and they can easily just delete us. Speaking of deletions, there's a Des Moines 12 kilometers away, broadside to me. I take, line up the shots, look how perfect this looks. And, oh, over pins. Oh, man, come on. Right in the Citadel. 11 kilometers away, kilometers away broadside to Miami. Ah, not a single pin in sight talk about frustrating so some surprise torpedoes from the Jutland and I managed to dodge Ooh, that was a little close for comfort managed to dodge that salvo oh, hi Baltimore more torpedoes from the Benson hi Baltimore four kilometers away from me broadside on take an aim at his citadel that time that worked why didn't it work under Des Moines go figure but a Baltimore four kilometers away so he's he's literally half the distance that the Des Moines was away from me he's a tier 8 and you know whatever he's dead a Magi 11 kilometers away from me broadside on this could be good now the legendary module does also turn the turrets at about the same rate of a oh I don't know a an ice drift so it takes a hot minute for the turrets to turn so Mog is turning hard I'm trying to predict where he's going to go and I do land two hits on his bow for 10,000 damage pretty nice damage there waiting to reload and he's turning so he's gonna be broadside onto me from about seven kilometers away which in a battleship doing that in front of a yammy is for sure a death sentence so the gearing has laid on a smoke screen for us, and I do thank him for that. But I start moving because I know that Jutland, once his torpedoes reload, he's for sure going to launch another salvo at me. Look, look at this perfect, beautiful broadside. And look at this dispersion from 8 kilometers away. I hit a smokestack and get two overpins. Oh, Aaron, Jesus. What have I done to thee? I do know... The enemy's dispersion is, isn't supposed to be that great this close, but I mean, come on, that was worse than German dispersion. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Anyway, Amagi is sailing further away from me now, and I get much better dispersion this time, and cleave off about 10,000 health there. So at this point in time, we're down three ships, one BB, two DD. They're only down that one Baltimore. So... Yeah, and we're also 200 points behind, and it looks like the most of the team is staying in the C cap. The carrier's hanging back around the J line, and we do have one up oh, there goes our Ma there goes their Amagi. and we do have one battleship and a destroyer hanging out south of that of the islands at sea. But still, the main team's well in the lead, and we need to do something about this. Some more torpedoes coming in from the Jutland. I start to turn and hope and try to take this one on my torpedo protection. Which I do, but I still get floating, so I stop that right away. Hello, Key. Hold the fire, my fire there, because he was turning. I'm trying to see what she's going to do. Is he going to escape? I want. Is he going to turn and give me broadside again? And oh no, he's going to do the whole maneuver and turn and give me broadside. So, go ahead, let the shots fly, and see what this does. Ooh, some another, almost 11,000 damage salvo there. So seven kilometers away from me, I start turning in. Because the Yemi's uh, side armor is, well, lacking to say the least. Super easy ship the Citadel if you give us uh, something your broadside. So the key is now being focused down by everyone on this flank. And torpedoes are for sure going to kill him. So I let them do that. Hello Des Moines that escaped my wrath earlier. Like, alright, 6,000 health. One turret will be enough to do it. Welp, if the, that last shot would have been an overpin, it would have. So let my other two, front two turrets go and get a hit for 434 damage and finish him off. Lightning's coming up now to for sure try to torpedo me. Thankfully I have the Wooster with me still. You can hear his guns going off back there. And Lightning gets... Oh, is he going to survive? Is he going to make it? He went undetected. Nope, not going to make it. Wooster manages to finish him off. Iowa, 15 kilometers out. 
Now this is more acceptable ranges for the Yami's dispersion. So he's got about 11,000 health left. And bye bye. <laughs> Managed to get three pins on him and finish him off. So we have quickly turned this around to our favor. Um, we have just completely wiped their forces over here at B. And now I say to my team, you know, come on, let's get going to B. We need to keep this momentum up. Because this will happen too. You'll have a really good push that everyone will just stop and stay where they're at and try to just farm damage. You need to keep moving. Thankfully, oh no, gearing. You got that right, gearing, buddy? Oh, that was a good, that was a good uh, destroyer player right there. He gave us a lot of support. Unfortunately, I couldn't dodge that Jutland torpedo. So Kremlin, 11 kilometers away, broadside on. Trying to hit him in the Citadel. Ooh, that's, that is some nice dispersion there. Well, that was. Flew apart. Get 11,000 damage off of him. And we'll notice that is something nice with the Yami. It seems like every time I do get an opportunity to hit these ships, I am getting, you know, 10,000, 11,000 damage. Pretty decent sized hits. Nothing too extreme so far in this uh, in this game. So Krillman, he is just charging at... What I'm oh, he's probably detecting our carrier right now. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know what he was shooting at uh, during uh, when I was actually playing this. I just realized he's probably just spotting our carrier, and and or the destroyer in front of it. So now there's an Ohio right there, and that's a rare ship to see. Um, even when I play Ohio, I don't run across many of them. Even though matchmaking is supposed to try and match you up with you know your same ship. He's seven kilometers away. And his 457 millimeter guns can for sure put a hurting on me. Now, look at the points. We haven't capped their, the B cap yet, so they are still in the lead. But I have just now crossed into it. And I've stopped them one point behind us before our points start ticking over again. So now we are one point in front of them. Whew. Uh, Carrier tried to get on me, but man... For, some reason Yami's AA actually worked just then. Um, most of the time that doesn't happen. And right here I realized, oh wait, I'm looking through the view of the back turrets. So I hit C to change that view and oh, hello beautiful broadside of the Ohio. And ooh, no citadels but some decent pins there for again another 12,000 damage salvo. And I probably should have saved the rear turret but I didn't because I thought I for sure would have citadeled him. And oh shit, that's a Kremlin 13 kilometers away from me. I am within the hyper accuracy radius of the Kremlin for sure. So I start turning to where I'm giving my stern to him and my bow toward well, nobody. And here comes the Kaga again trying to get some torpedoes off on me. And that time the Yami's AA is more stereotypical <laughs> and doesn't it only shoots down on a couple of planes. So now this Kremlin, who if he was looking over here, could absolutely kick my teeth in but he's not he's tunnel visioned on either our carrier or I think that Jutland and now just now he's starting to look at me and he's 16 kilometers away that's now outside of his sweet zone and inside the Yami's sweet zone and look at those beautiful shells and again another 10,000 damage salvo again reliable damage from the Yami but nothing spectacular as far as punching the crap out of, out of somebody and ooh, that could have been much worse. That was very close to hitting Yemi's uh, little cheeky area. And oh, goodbye Kremlin. Hello Benson though, uh, six kilometers away from me. This is not the ideal situation to be in because although the Yemi does have very good tor uh, torpedo protection, I mean, you still don't want to eat that many torpedoes in a battleship. And unfortunately, my stern is facing toward him, so I can't go uh, I can't go forward because there's an island, so I gotta do some reverse torpedo beats at the amazing speed of 10 knots. So I'm trying to get my stern around to where I will dodge all of these torpedoes. And. Oh, am I gonna do it? Am I gonna pull it off? Nope, I'm gonna take one up the rudder, but hey, that's not too bad. So now we have completely turned this game around in just about four or five minutes, and all that's left of the enemy team is the enemy carrier. So now I'm still going in full reverse. Um, I'm doing this because I don't know where that carrier is at. And I still want to have some maneuvering speed if he launches another attack wave at me. And now since I haven't seen him for a while, I throw it into 
full ahead, and thankfully it's going after the Bayard as I do this, because it takes the Yammy a hot minute to start moving forward after, uh, after going in one direction or the other. The Kaga decides to go after Bismarck, which, I mean, that is a appropriate target. The Bismarck's AA is not all that fantastic, but, well, looks like he got, ooh, he got a pretty okay salvo off there. That's North Carolina, I was looking to see what that noise was. And lo and behold, there's the Kaga. 22 kilometers away, a little far off. But hey, we are in the Yami, the ship that's the queen of sniping. Trying to guesstimate where he's going to go. But those shots go. It's going to be a couple of seconds before those shells get there. And he is... Let's see, how's this going to hit? Oh, he goes undetected. And we get... Hmm, 18,000 damage. That was a much better salvo. Five shells hit, two over pins. So all but two shells actually made contact there with the Kaga. And the Kaga, for some reason, is attacking the Wooster. Um, not the best idea to do in a Tier 8 carrier. But anyway, by no surprise, this we're clearly going to win this match. And we do. So this was quite a good match. Um, now, it wasn't this, the typical steamroll where the enemy team just goes completely potato and loses it was we managed to roll together as one large group and their fleet sp split up so we managed to just have the this huge just steamrolling force of ships that we went to C we kept moving we went to B we kept moving and we went to A but by that time their, sh their team was already you know they split up they went to the A cap and the C cap we just managed to overwhelm them and like I've said before, limbing trains can work if you keep moving. This is the prime example of that. It's just that more often than not, they're not going to keep moving. So that was a quite enjoyable battle versus some of the ones I've been getting that night. And that was actually a good team to actually have because as you guys saw, we supported each other. Um, they pushed with me. They didn't just you know, let me go first and get melted by everybody. And then came up. They pushed. We pushed together. We took B kept moving and that's the key keep moving so if you enjoyed the video please drop a like leave a comment and subscribe we are on our way to 6,000 subscribers now and you guys have been crushing it we are under 700 subscribers away from 6,000 now this is again just crazy for me the amount of growth we've had this month actually last month and still continuing this month so thank you guys for that hope you're having a wonderful monday and hope to catch all of you guys in the next one